has Arden taken you through Merton yet? For those of you that have had... Okay, so in the Chicago school there's a whole bunch and what you, you we go into this really, really deeply in 7304 and that's why I've said to Arden, don't require the students to know this really in depth. When they get to 7304, that's when I'm trying to blow your mind with Merton oh, more. Okay. okay, but I find this stuff really, really exciting. Not because of where it starts, because remember it's the key idea is about crime where it starts. But what I find really exciting about Burton is that potentially we could actually shake our youth work practice to challenge some of our societal goals that we already have. Because we, in this system, the societal goals are easy for the haves and not for the have-nots. And Merton provides a picture for how to see that. So Merton's another one with Chicago school people. So Chicago school being Merton, Thrasher, and Albert Cohen. Okay? Now Merton argues that every society has accepted goals. Okay. That I know Arden framed this within um, within education. Yeah. But what are the accepted goals? What do we expect young people to achieve in New Zealand? What is the sign of a successful New Zealander? What do they have? A job. What's the material stuff? A house, car, car, and they're married. And family. Yeah, family. Okay. These a barbecue. Well, these and some people would say you've got got even got a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and a batch by the the water. Yeah. You know, and your job means that you don't have to worry about day to day stuff. But these are key things. And not everyone's got the resources to get them, particularly in places like Auckland and in places like Westport. So Auckland being a city of, it's about a million now, isn't it? Yes. Okay, Westport being a town of about 3,000 now. Okay, because what's happened in Westport, where I come from, like some of you are aware, is that the, mine, the local mine shut down, which basically means no jobs. So instantly, the way to get the goal in Westport's been stolen from most people. That's how they would see it, okay? And we know in Auckland, just simply go by the, the stereotypical news, the price of housing yeah. makes it unaffordable for a lot of young people. And we know, and I can say this here, that actually the price of education makes it really hard for young people. Mm. You know, there's things that, that, there are stumbling blocks that get in the way, okay? Now, according to Merton though, there are a group of young people who will accept the goals and accept the means to get them, and when they do that, they conform. I change the words. They accept the goals and they have the resources. So they accept the goals and they have the resources. A good family in Epson's bringing them up. That young person has got really only their own decision. And a lot of the time, I'm not saying it's stereotypical all young people in Epson, mm. but we can say that, that that young person's got a lot more going for them than a young kid growing up in a state house in Otara. And I'm not yeah. trying to pick it. You know, when I teach this in, in 7304, when you get me, I say leave your PC at the seat. Yeah. Because when yeah. we leave our PC at the it's seat, true, we can though. actually start getting a little yeah. bit honest about it's where true. our stereotypes are. Yeah. Okay? So a young kid that's in, um, in um, say, Epson again, I'll pick on them, they might actually decide though that they don't want that goal. Okay? So they might decide that even though their parents have paid for them to go to a private boarding school, they're part of the national rowing squad, um, and that um, they're going to go to university, that even though they know that they've got the means to do that, they may decide they're not going to do it. And what they're probably going to get into is a ritualistic behaviour. They just do it for the sake of doing it. When I worked at Victoria University in Wellington, the bulk of the students that we had going through um, subjects like law were going there because mum and dad had told them to. Mm. And they were turning up because mum and dad had told them to. They were just doing a ritual. Yeah. This is what happens in my family. But they didn't really want that. You know, that young kid, picking on, on Epson, that young kid from Epson might have wanted to be a pig farmer. Mm. Yeah. And there are some young people 
and Wauhudu families that want to actually live 10 steps back. But they can't because they're stepping out of their family tradition. And that may even be said to them. I know down in Christchurch it's the sort of stuff that's said in the old school families. Um, there's some families that would see it a step backwards if their child become a teacher. A lot of families would see it a step forward. So kids that go through the, I'm just doing this because I'm being told to, I'm not actually getting up to anything. I, I really, I'm just playing the game, this is the way it is. And you'll probably see here, this is a little bit like um, Marcia's identity matrix that we went through. You've got the kid who can end up being the type of kid who's going to actually achieve an identity status because they accept the challenge and they accept that they have to get some sort of identity and then you get the kid that, um, oh, what's it, it's a uh, um, foreclosure I think, um, I just do what my parents tell me to, kid, okay. So there's a very, thing you can see um, Western theories like to put things in boxes, <laughs> okay. But this is, I find versions quite exciting because I can actually see these sort of things happening. Now you've got some people who accept the goals, and I'm going to pick on my own hood. Okay? Family down the road accept the goals. They, and if this is true because they've been raided, <laughs> this family, they accept the goals. You've got to have a house, you've got to have a wife, you've got to have a boat, batch by the sea, and a bloody good car, and the more bling on the car the better. Mm -hmm. And we won't get it through the normal ways and means. We'll start growing some deck in our backyard. They're not quite breaking all the rules, but they're innovating. Yeah. Okay, they, they are breaking some of the rules to get the same outcomes that everyone else has got. Um, but you can see this going on at school. You can have a young kid who's like, I know, I know you had all this stuff there. So if you've done bonjour with Adam, Hygiene me and and the different messages that go on at school and go on at home, or grand scheme bonjour. Well, there'll be some kids that when they go home, and there's some BYD students I know, when they go home, the home environment, the last thing they want the kid to do or the student to do is study. You know, the actual cultural goal that, the, that you or home has got is slightly different to actually what's going on at home. You're trying to espouse to maybe this white, this idea I'm gonna get a degree, okay, which is very Western. Um, and I'm not saying it's wrong because I do think that you get the thinking that can help change the world. Yeah. But the innovative step might be right, every day on, I know I'm not going to get it on the way home, so every day on the way home I'm going to stop in the local library and spend an hour studying on the computer. And we have kids in Wainui that do that. They are aiming hard and they use all the resources in the community to help them because they know they haven't got the resources at home. That's innovation. What I'm excited about is that's the space where I think the best youth work can happen. The other space I think where the best youth work can happen is down in rebellion. <laughs> but that's something different. <laughs> now, the retreatism group, they're the ones that have rejected the goals, or the goals are simply unattainable. They've also rejected the means, or the resources and means are completely un 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 not there for them. This is the group that ends up suiciding um, self-harming, alcoholism, they not go into their own world. Okay? Then there's another group. Fuck the goals, fuck the means, we're going to start our own system up. Okay? That is the area of gangs. Okay? This is the area that Thrash is writing in. Because many of the gangs suddenly find out that the goals that have been set for them by society aren't actually going to be attainable for most of them, so they might as well set up their own goals and their own means to get those goals. Okay, so the function of the gang has a function of rebellion as well against the norms and the means of society. But this is particularly from Chicago. Now they're not saying that gangs are wrong, they've got no focus at all on inequality. They're saying that forms a function. They're saying the gang cannot, does not have the means, does not have the goals, so it's pushed into a space of rebellion. And that function resu results in finding resources in another way, finding identity in another way, 
and providing a new social structure because that's not going to be provided in the, in the society that they're in. This is where I think that, like, even though everything I said about, oh, you know, university degrees, well, this is not a university degree. This is an applied degree, which makes it a lot more powerful. A university degree is, you go into university and hear me talk about this for like 10 hours, okay? And, and but and not really been able to be applied. This is where I think the power of this comes in. Because when you can see that actually the youth gangs provide a function. When kids join gangs, we know, most of us know, the gut feeling is for a sense of belonging. Yeah, you know, when and you think about it, these talk things here, resources, social structure, identity and stuff. And one um, gang I kid group of gang kids I talked to for a research project. It was a group that there were some that weren't in the gang and some that weren't, and the, a couple of the girls had lost a brother or sister, and so they were grieving, saying that the gangs were broken and needed to stop. And the, a, a young guy, I said, well, why aren't you speaking in the break? I knew it had been huffing, but I asked him why he um, hadn't spoken, and he said, well, actually, this story isn't my story. I left, and I left one place in New Zealand, and I came down here because at least in the gang I knew when I was going to get beaten. Mm -hmm. At home, I didn't. So there's a social structure going on that he knows that he can fit into. At home, he's experiencing a family that's all in retreat, a broken family that probably haven't got the ability to accept the goals and they ain't got the resources to get those goals. So they're retreating into an environment of abuse. He pulls out of it and goes into an environment of rebellion. I think there's a space for youth work there, not, uh, not in the sense of well, we'll all become gang workers, but in the sense that maybe we need to rethink our goals in society. Yeah. Because if we rewrite our goals, then maybe it becomes attainable for more people. And we don't have a hidden curriculum in education that slams some kids down one path and some kids down another. Yeah. Okay, so we'll look at this in action.